welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Tanika, and today we're going to be discussing love and translation, so we don't have anything on the top of the episode to talk about, so let's hop right in to Season 1, Episode 2, Lib is a Battlefield, I think. Lib, 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 lib is a battlefield. Whatever, something is a battlefield. It's supposed to be love is a battlefield. I'm assuming we leave off, or we start off with Trip being rejected by Sarah. Um, so he needs a little time to just re-examine life. So Khalil's gonna go next. Y'all, he's 24 years old. I did not catch that. He is also very young. So the oldest guy here is Trip. Lord. Um, so anyway, he says that his two women that he's into is Idy and Jennifer. Um, Idy's from Japan and Jennifer is from Brazil. But he ends up asking Jennifer um, on the date and she says yes. So... She says that she wasn't actually expecting him to ask her on a date because he actually was not her strongest connection. Anyway, next is Dylan. He's asking Tulai, who is from Germany, or Dutchland. And Sarah is clearly not happy because she wanted Dylan to ask her on a date. Anyway, so anyway, so yeah, Tulai pauses a little bit while he's asking her on the date, but she ultimately says, cool. He says, um, thank you in German, which is Dankeschön, because that's probably the only word he can say, because that's the only thing I can say as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the, so anyway, sorry, she does worry that the other women will be jealous that Dylan picked her. So I think she's kind of choosing to distance herself from the women just to self-preserve or whatever it is, which does come back a little later. So next trip is going to go again. And this time he asked Giselle on the date and she says yes. And she says that she will make this date unforgettable. So it's the next day we are on our way to this date that we don't know yet where we're headed to. But meanwhile, Sarah is kind of regretting her decision to say no to Trip. Um, she was kind of hoping that either Dylan or Khalil would have asked her on this date. But I don't even know if Sarah is on Khalil's radar. Um, I'm not even sure if... I mean, I think Sarah is on Dylan's radar, but yeah, you just rejected a guy. He's now not going to ask you. So you kind of shot yourself in the foot a little bit by saying no to trip. But nonetheless, um, Iman, who is our girl from Morocco, who caused a little bit of a ruckus last week, says that... um. She thinks Dylan is handsome and does kind of who she is kind of, you know, into. And she thinks that Tulai is vicious. And she says the reason she's vicious is because she kind of started to distance herself after Dylan asked her on the date. And I'm thinking, that's why she's vicious. Ma'am, do you know the definition of vicious? Because that's not it. And again, as mentioned, Tulai made the decision that she wanted to distance herself from the women right now just to self-preserve. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. She's not here to be your best friend. She's here to find a man. And if she's dating a guy that someone else is also into, why wouldn't she just kind of say, you know what, I'm going to step back. I'm going to keep my shit to myself. And that way, hopefully I can just, you know, not cause too much of a ruckus. But this Iman girl is, she's on something. I don't know what it is, but she needs to come back down to earth. And you kind of see a little later on how far gone this girl is and how I think some of the women are so done with her shit. Anyways, we'll talk about that a little later on. Um, so now the guys, um, so sorry. So they say when the guys come back, they're going to look real pretty 
and um, that the men will notice them so much that they're going to break their necks. And basically, this is all to sabotage the women who are currently on the dates. We're pretty cutthroat, and it's a day one. So, back to the date. No one is really talking. However, um, Dylan and July are sitting kind of close to each other, kind of hands and stuff on each other. Khalil feels very awkward with Jennifer at this moment, because, I mean, she wasn't even looking in his direction. Um, but they have hopes that the date, or sorry, he hopes that the date won't be bad. You know, whatever. So they get to the destination and we find out that they're going to be ziplining and jumping into the water below. And, um, we find out here, thanks to, uh, what's her name? <laughs> As I read her name, I'm not going to remember her. Um, but we find out from the host that, um, science shows that there is, um, a belief that adrenaline increases the att attraction between the opposite sex, only the opposite sex. Okay. Between opposite sexes, basically, but Giselle looks real nervous and we're about to find out why in a little bit, but she does do it. Everyone else does it too, but she does it last. And she does it, and all goes well. And, you know, Tripp says that, you know, he has experienced true love before, and he knows he can again. Sir, true love doesn't exist. And if you had found true love, really and truly, wouldn't you still be with that person? Because that's what they say in Disney, apparently. According to, you know, all of the Disney movies. Come on now. You're a 30-year-old man. Stop waiting for... Princess Charming <laughs> come along. So now Dylan and Tulai are alone and they're talking. We're kind of separating the, the three now. And she is trying to ask him about his mom and his dad. But of course, he has no clue what she's saying. But she tells him that he is beautiful. But he says, do I like you? Because he doesn't know what she's saying. Um, but... He then asks, like, you know, how do you say kiss in German? So she tells him. And then he says, can I have a kiss? And she plays dumb here and says, um, like, I don't know what you're saying, but she fully knows what she's trying, what he's trying to ask here. And she says, it's too fast. Like she, and I agree with her. It's way too fast. Kind of shows like you're being an F boy here. But she, yeah, she says it's too fast and she normally does not kiss on the first date. So, yeah, so that's, that's a no. But he hopes that her not kissing him or whatever is just because she didn't understand him. And I said, no, sir, she understands you. Like, come on. Anyway, with Trip and Giselle, she likes to look you know, people and, you know, look eye to eye. It's kind of important to her, I guess. And that's what she, well, she was so intense, I guess, with her, with her stare. Then he says, um, let's go out to the cave. And she's like, I can't swim. But he doesn't know that she said that. And he's like, oh, you want to, you want to go? You're good to go. Okay, let's go. Oh my God. You're about to have this girl go into the water with no life jacket because if you clocked when they did the zip lining she was wearing a life jacket so she probably felt okay with the life jacket on knowing that she's not going to drown but you have this girl going into the water and i mean i think she's i don't know if she shook her head no or whatever but what she should have done is literally do like the swimming motion and kind of be like S -s no <laughs> like and this is so gross which kind of just shows like he is so into this Disney fantasy is that he's like, oh, mermaid, your natural habitat. She's not fucking Ariel. Is that why? <laughs> is that why he's so drawn to her too? Not just that she is gorgeous and she definitely seems to be into him, but that she has red hair and looks like a mermaid. Oh my God, dude, enough. You, sir, are not Prince Eric. If you wanted to be, you need to dye your hair. But uh, you're not. Prince Eric, you are not. I, like, this is... This is, uh, this is just 
too much. But anyway, they do go out into the water together. And then he just leaves her to flip and flop around and figure it out like a fish out of water. And he does kind of say, oh, wait, like, can you swim? And she says no. And he catches this time that she says no. He's like, oh, my God. So he goes after her to save her, which his Marine thing clicked in because he's like, that's what we do. We be trained to save people. He has not saved people outside of his training or whatever but he had he knows what to do so he goes out there and he saves her and it's great and she's like she's like i was just tired i feel like i do think like um she knew what she was doing here like yes you can't swim like why would you i wouldn't put your life in danger honestly but i think i think she knows enough to keep herself above water because we kind of see her doing the motion of like with the legs and the arms and then she would stop and then she'd do it again and then she would stop. I think, I think she is. I think she knows what she was doing. I don't doubt for a second she does not know how to swim. I think she does not know how to swim, but I think she knows how to doggy paddle <laughs> or at least like keep herself up. So it worked in her favor because then they make out intensely the sounds like the heavy breathing and yeah yeah it was a lot um <laughs> but yeah that's they're 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 doing good i guess um back at the house ari is um sitting down with sarah i believe and she kind of says like you know the women in japan are definitely getting stronger um but being overseas is still shocking to her and Sarah says that she's going to be playing hard to get with uh, Dylan because why give him everything all up front? Like, make him work for it, which I don't disagree with because she's kind of saying, like, these women, or she's maybe a little later, but she's also like these women going all out to, like, dress pretty and whatever and to get their attention. She's like, no, I'm not, I don't need to do that. And I love that. Like, she's not my favorite person, but I love that. So now we're with Khalil and Jennifer and he tries talking to her and asking questions, but duh, she can't understand you. He legitimately asks a question like, what are you passionate about? But sir, she does not understand you and you can't even, you can't even like do body language to kind of help with what you're trying to say here. And I'm like, are you new? Were you not here last night when they said they don't understand you? The loser. Um, but, um, so she just grabs the, uh, the champagne and pours some in her glass and she eats some food because she doesn't know what else to do. I, I get it. Again, more of these questions that she does not know what you're saying and you can't use your body to help the situation um the only thing that she could kind of answer but then it goes quickly downhill after that was whether or not she likes to dance and she kind of like does this dancing and she's like yes and she likes to dance funk and then something else too that i didn't write down but i think it might be kind of maybe like a brazilian dance or i'm not sure if it's like a brazilian dance or, or music or whatever it is but he doesn't know what it is either. So, yeah. And then he kind of starts asking, like, about, or she starts asking about his parents. And he mentions that they split up. Her parents are still together. Then he asks, um, do you want to get married? Do you see yourself getting married? She doesn't understand him. And she asks, just, do you have kids? And he says, I want kids, but his body language was saying, yes, I have kids. And that's what she clocked. She thought he was saying he has kids because the thing is, is that she asked, do you have kids? And that's how he kind of answered. So, um, so now she thinks that he has kids. Um, but then he asked her, do you want kids? 
because he had emotions like, what about you? But what he doesn't realize is that he isn't asking her, do you want kids? He's asking whether or not she has kids. And the answer is, no, she doesn't have kids. But her answer to wanting kids might be different. So he's under the impression that she doesn't want kids. And then later is under the impression that she doesn't want to get married because she answers no. I don't want to get married thinking that I guess he's proposing to her right now. She's like, it's too soon. But I'm like, ma'am, he's, he didn't ask if you, he's not, he's not proposing to you. He's asking in future if you do want to get married. So it was an absolute shit show. This date didn't go good. Didn't go good at all. Um, and she basically says like, she feels correct in the connection she felt the night before, which was a platonic one. And there's nothing there for them, I guess. So back to Dylan and 2Y, they are actually saying to each other that they um, like each other, but he isn't like fully understanding, which is, you know, to be expected under the circumstances. But anyway, meanwhile, at the house, the women are getting ready. And as the men walk in, they're just there waiting and they just start partying. And they're like, we got to go shower. <laughs> but before we could do, we're going to play, spin the bottle, and then Trip gets to decide who he can, who he wants to kiss. And he picks, I think he pronounced it lady, but I don't know if it's lady or lady or what it is exactly. Um, but that's who he picks and he kisses her. I don't know if he kissed her. I think he kissed her on the lips, right? But Giselle is, like, confused. She's like, we just had this great day where we made out, and now he's kissing another woman right in front of me, which, yeah, that's probably in poor taste. But anyway. <laughs> and then we see this girl from France whose name I... I think it's Jocelyn, I think was her name. Um, black girl. And she just licks Dylan's neck. It's fucking disgusting. And this man, let me remind you all, was just outside in the elements. I've been in water. It's probably sweaty. All the stuff. He hasn't showered yet. And she licks his neck. It's fucking disgusting. Anyways. Yeah, so that happens. And I don't think Dylan was into it at all. <laughs> and... To lies we know is choosing to keep her distance because the women um, could get the best of her and she doesn't want that. Now everyone from the date is going to go shower. But then I guess Dylan might have come back down. I'm not sure. And to lie was upstairs. So we didn't get enough context here. So I think basically what happens is the men shower upstairs and the women stay downstairs where they also have a shower downstairs. Or they might have multiple showers downstairs. July decided that she wanted to shower upstairs because she says the water um, temperature is not great downstairs. The water is warmer upstairs because, say with me guys, heat rises. <laughs> so she's going upstairs. Um, but she showered, I guess, by herself, but Iman is trying to insinuate that she showered with Dylan. So Iman is like, why were you upstairs? Why were you upstairs? Like, why were you showering upstairs? And she tries to make it be about the fact that, which is, I'm not discrediting this. I think this is absolutely true. Remember, she is from Morocco where, um, you know, intermingling between single people is or engaged people this is not what you do you do that when you're married but she says where i come from that's not normal that's not okay but ma'am you cannot put your culture on other people just like we say about 90 dayers the americans cannot put their culture into your country or into your world because we don't abide by that and you don't abide by us we have to go and respect each other's cultures but 
Tuvada doesn't owe you shit. I'm just, you know, spitballing here, but I don't think German, uh, Germany goes based on the same standards as Morocco does. So for you to put your shit in this situation using your culture is bullshit. And she, the problem here is, is Iman is bitchy about it. She's not nice about it. She's not willing to hear people out. She is too much. Too, she goes from zero to 60 in about 1.2 seconds. It's ridiculous. And the men have no clue what's happening here. And eventually, Tuvai loses her shit and tells her to shut up. Like, shut the fuck up. Enough. Like, you, I don't owe you shit. And Dylan kind of catches on. It's like, oh, does she think we shower together? And she's like, I don't really know. But I don't think they did. She wouldn't even fucking kiss the guy. They did not shower together. Like, enough. You're full of your, the reason you're, you're kicking up fuss because you like Dylan. So don't put your culture into it. You're bullshitting me and you're bullshitting everybody else. But one of the women who I don't know who it was, but one of the women literally told her, or was trying to tell her, you're too much. Why does every situation have to be a problem? So you're basically going to burn your bridges and keep doing it because I don't like her. I want her off the show. She's too much. Maybe you're single, not because of the the issues you have with Moroccan men, but maybe because of you. And it's okay to have standards and not settle, but you, ma'am, need to calm it down. Because if this is how you are, this is how you are in all relationships, not just romantic ones, friendships, family, all of it. You're too much. Anyways. So... Uh, Khalil is going to try and talk to ID. I'm oh, sorry, Ari. He, he said ID at one point, but it's, I think it's Ari. It's A-I-R-I, but anyways. Um, and they are able to communicate pretty well. They're using their body language and they are able to communicate. So it's great. They do hold hands and she's like, you know, it is a little weird for her to be holding hands with him, but she kind of hopes the other women are seeing him hold, uh, hold her hand. So she's all about, I love her. I love her. Um, then Dylan and Sarah talk. And she's definitely playing that game of being hard to get. And she basically thinks that um, you shouldn't talk to other people if you're talking to me. And I said, this is not, this is not it. If that's what you want, then you shouldn't be on the show. That's not, that's not how, how it's going to go. And he literally says, like, she can't tell me that I can't talk to other women. Like, you don't usually get an opportunity like this so to explore your options. So, oh, well, Sarah. <laughs> but um, with that being said, lady or weedy, whatever, is a little bother, bothered by Trip, kind of focusing on Giselle. But, yeah. Because Giselle comes back, she looks like a million bucks. He keeps calling her mermaid, cut it out. And uh, yeah, that's basically, that's basically the show, guys. Not much else to, to talk about. So if you like what you heard, please rate and review the podcast on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Again, we're on every different podcast app that you desire to use. Um, we're also on YouTube at Reality Tea Times 2. If you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to Facebook or Instagram at Reality Tea Times 2, Instagram, Threads, Twitter, TikTok at Reality Tea Times 2 Pod. You can email us at Reality Tea Times 2 at hotmail.com. We have a website at solo.to forward slash reality t times two. Don't forget, I also have another podcast with my friend Mikel called The Next Take Podcast, where we have conversations and discussions about just about everything. And you can find us at our, our website at solo.to forward slash next take podcast, YouTube at next take 
podcast. But that's basically it. Again, don't forget if you rate and review us on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify and the five star rating, I will read that on the podcast. But that is it for now. Thanks, guys. Bye.